When you consider the things that these families have been pushed out of for decades, and now they get to come in and do this, this is everything that they've prayed for. Thanks to the policies in Arizona, we have been able to serve whoever wants to come. They can come. We're able to make it work. With ESA money, we were able to pay for our son's aid, and my son can read now, and he couldn't read before. My favorite subject is probably writing or math. Spelling. Composition and grammar. Spelling. Well, I think the minuses are so fun, but the pluses I think are so hard. We are reading different books like Little Bear and Frog and Toad. We do problems on the whiteboard like 53 plus 72 and stuff. A hyrax is like this little animal. They kind of look like a rabbit. I like it way better than my other school. We've seen in Arizona how education choice is the rising tide that lifts all boats. Arizona was the first state to adopt a tax credit scholarship in 1997. And in 2015, Arizona was the first state to adopt an education savings account. Arizona has been the fastest improving state on the National Assessment for Education Progress. And we expect that other states that follow Arizona's lead will see similar results. When you have education freedom, you have a wide diversity of options so families can choose the schools that align with their values. Our mission is to partner with families in nurturing their children for academic and spiritual growth. So we have 120 students in our school, preschoolers all the way through sixth grade. The unique thing about our school is that we are a hybrid model, which means that we are a blend between homeschool and at-school learning. Our students are on campus Tuesdays and Thursdays for instruction. Wednesdays are optional and they're a really fun day because students get to attend electives and we have music, STEM, art, and culinary art. Mondays and Fridays are at home days. So the same curriculum that we use on campus transfers to home as well. And the parents do the educating on Mondays and Fridays. I've taught online. I've taught in public school night and day <laughs> difference here. I think the biggest difference is I'm able to give my students the time and energy that they need because I only have 15 kids. There's so many uh, different types of learning environments. They encourage movement, they encourage kids to be expressive and not just sit and be quiet and spit back out whatever information they're given. I truly believe that the ESA has enabled us to exist this year and to thrive. Nearly all of the families that attend our school use the ESA. We intentionally set tuition below the ESA allotment so that it would be accessible to all families. With an education savings account, or as they're known in Arizona, empowerment scholarship accounts, families have the freedom and flexibility to truly customize their child's education. With an ESA, families can tap into 90% of the funding that the state would have spent on their child at a traditional public school. I love Latin. I love classical studies. It's a good base for language formation starting to create that foundation of patterns. My sister actually said, hey, have you heard of Highland Latin School? A classical education is simply studying the ancients, studying Greece, the best things that came out of Rome and Jerusalem to instill virtue and wisdom into a child so that they will love their Western heritage, their Western civilization, and pass that on to the next generation. ESA has made it possible for us to be in this school. They can use those funds for things like private school tuition, tutoring, homeschool curricula, online learning, textbooks, school uniforms, and special needs therapy. And they can also roll over unused funds from year to year to save for later expenses. The mission of the school is to teach our kids to become like Christ through a classical Christian education within a covenantal community. We just do it in Spanish. We pour into the kids learning their native tongue and then we slowly integrate the immersion in greater percentages so that they would learn how to speak, read and write both languages at grade level. These kids are really able to take the beauty that is classical education that Push Ridge has done for the last 25 years and the way that we do the arts and the way we do athletics. We now get to do that in Spanish in a neighborhood that is predominantly Spanish speaking around schools that never see anything like this. We feel that the public school is lacking in uh, educating the children nowadays. 
So he wanted something better for our daughter. Our daughter has flourished here. She loves coming to school. When she's on vacation, she misses being here. We're both Hispanic, so we both speak the language. We still speak Spanish. And her grandparents, they only speak Spanish. So we wanted her to continue to be able to communicate yeah. with them. Under Arizona's tax credit scholarship policy, families apply to school tuition organizations, or STOs, for scholarships that they can use to pay for private school tuition. And donors to the STOs get dollar for dollar tax credits when they file their taxes. So all but one family last year used STOs and they were fully funded. You know, when we first started this school, we didn't have the building yet, but these STOs would show up at a cafe down the street and they would literally share with these moms, hey, this is the education that's available to you and this is how we're here to help you financially. They have gone above and beyond to ensure that these kids have these scholarships. Oh, I mean, we wouldn't be able to have her here at Push Ridge without, um, without that help. Yeah, the STLs have completely helped yeah, us. This, because of the scholarships is why we're able to give her this kind of education. Yes. Torre Day School was founded in 2010, so we started with seven kids. It was actually started in my house, and thanks to really the policies in Arizona, we've grown tremendously since we started with seven students, now we have over 400. Most of the students who come to our school come from low-income families, so we have a lot of students who are able to receive the corporate tax credit scholarship from Arizona, and we have children who are also receiving an ESA. We never wanted to turn a child away because their parents couldn't pay anything. Thanks to the policies in Arizona, we have been able to maintain that open-door policy. Parents are looking for schools that take character development the moral development of their child seriously. Unfortunately, in the district school system, too often students are expected to leave their faith at the schoolhouse door. And for a lot of families, having a religious outlook, having God front and center in the classroom is something that is really important. So when I was looking for a school for my daughter, um, I wanted something different. I actually was a teacher, so I was in public education for several years. I wanted a um, a Christian worldview to be taught to my daughter. At Arcadia Christian, we're really seeking to develop students to be contributing members of society and uh, to be authentic uh, lovers of people. So going out and sharing the good news of Jesus with all that they, they meet. We decided to trust Highland Latin School with this educational journey with our sons because I think it all comes down to identity and who they are in relation to God, the source of love and truth, and who they are in relation to um, themselves, who God made them to be, and learning about how to get along in this world with others. Religious studies infuse the entire day at Torre Day School of Phoenix. We have half a day of religious studies, half a day of general studies. However, the religion permeates everything. So from how the kids dress when they come to school, we make sure that it's a religious dress code. We serve kosher food. We have mezuzahs on the door. We try to have religious extracurricular activities happening. And that's the reason why parents send their children to our school is because they want that religious environment. They want their kids to learn Judaism and to appreciate Judaism and to love Judaism. These parents who were shut out of the schools for so long, even when they were children, their parents were shut out. Now they come to a school in a safe way where they get to be involved in everything that's coming. I can just pop in and see my child. Yes, absolutely. I can just come in and help out with the teacher. Absolutely. I can come in and do chapel with you guys. Absolutely. Wait, you're going to do chapel in Spanish as well as English every other week? Yes, absolutely. Wait a minute. My child gets to praise the Lord in the hymnals that my grandparents sang to me, in the tongue, in the language that they sang to me, in mariachi class while they're playing guitars? Yes, absolutely. They're really learning how to come together in a beautiful new way to ensure that their children have a Christian education without losing the cultura. But always remembering, this is the beauty of Push Rich Christian Academy is that Jesus is above all. Politicians and bureaucrats often try to judge schools along one objective metric, test scores. And that's one thing that parents consider, but parents take a much more holistic look at education. Parents don't want schools that only produce good workers. They want schools that are producing good citizens, good neighbors, and good people. If other states want to have an education system that truly empowers families, following Arizona's lead and enacting education savings accounts is the way to go. There's enough bad people in the world right now and a lot of chaos going on. And I think like we're made to be bold and different and I think that's 
something that we're trying to do here with these kiddos is teach them that that's good to be bold and different. Thank you.